Well, I got uh, elected to serve the people of Aaron Michael and, and, and of the Alman, and uh, whatever I do, Beth, I do 100% to the best of my ability. So when uh, we first sat down after being elected with the Chief Minister and he said, uh, you know, wh wh where, where's your interest, what, what do you want to do? Uh, there's a number of areas that I was keen on and, and some other things that were put to me and said, would you take this on? And my attitude is, I'm a team player. Uh, if I'm asked to take something on, I, 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 I will do that. Uh, I've got a capacity for work and if I can add value to a situation I, I think it's the right thing to do to step forward and take it on so um, you know I had an opportunity in, in for five years and uh, certainly wanted to uh, leave it in the best place that uh, th that I could because my motivation to stand was I didn't feel the Alman was in the place it should be. So, so do you think then that you have taken it anywhere near the place that it should be? No, not yet. No, it's it's a journey. We're on a, uh, an improving uh, path. There's, there's there's been progress made made in many ways. But one of the frustrations I have is that I can actually see now uh, as much, if not more, that still needs doing than I could when I first went in. Because obviously you're exposed to so much more. But uh, you, you you can never be satisfied. There's always more to be done. Now you say you've been part of Comen during what was an incredibly difficult time, mm -hmm. of course, over the past year. I wonder if people actually really saw then what you contributed in that time, other than can I say it, an unwanted bus and cycle lane on Glencrutchery Road? Because you weren't one of the visible people, were you? Visible in terms of the COVID situation, that, that was very much led by the Chief Minister and the, uh, and, and the, and the Health Minister. Uh, what people don't see behind the scenes is the way that Comin works as a, as a, as a team. Uh, obviously, the Chief Minister is the, the captain of the team, but it is very much a, a team effort where everybody uh, ov obviously has their own departmental responsibilities, but in terms of making uh, broader policy, and then, then we're all part of that. And uh, uh, hugely intensive. I mean, obviously there was no there was no playbook, no rule book. Um, having to make decisions uh, quite quite fast in many cases, often with imperfect information. Um, with the benefit of hindsight, some of those uh, look better than others. But you know, the reality is, you're there. You've got to make decisions, and as a team, you have to stand stand behind those. And you know what? Sometimes, do you think people would actually appreciate it if some of those decisions, which perhaps weren't necessarily the best ones, you owned up to and just said? We got that wrong because I don't think we necessarily see that within government. I think generally there's an expectation that people make decisions and then um, with with hindsight afterwards, some of those can can, can look uh, perhaps not the best, but it's about what did you know at the time and what information uh, did you have? I mean, I know some of the uh, lockdown decisions, you know, literally information was changing by the hour. And um, even a few days later, you sort of think, well, should we have reacted like that? Should we have been quicker, slower, uh, you know, a bit more, a bit less? Um, t to be honest, I think if you're in those positions, you have to just get on and make the decisions and then be, and then be accountable for them. And there needs to be an expectation that you're not going to get everything right. Um, you know, show me somebody that's no, never got anything wrong and I'll show you somebody that's never done anything. And, so with and hindsight then, that bus and cycle lane? The bus and cycle lane uh, around uh, the um, St Ninian's Glencrutchery Road Junction, that was OK. That was part of the traffic management. I had no problem with that. I t told everybody it was going to be temporary. Nobody believed that it was, but it, but it was only temporary. It was part of managing the traffic displaced from the prom. We went through that phase. We've pushed on. And that, that's history. I, I don't have any worries about that about okay. that decision at the time. We'll talk about the prom in a moment. But first of all, you do say you believe you have a lot to offer to yeah. the people of Aaron Michael. Now, they have had two ministers representing them now for some time with so much involved, I'm guessing, in the ministerial work, your chairmanships. How on earth do you have time to actually focus on their needs? Well, it's that, that's all part of the balance. And, you know, it, it is far easier um, not having those additional responsibilities in, to, to concentrate on, on, on the needs of your constituents at a micro level. But my view would be the best things for the Isle of Man are generally the best things for the people of Aaron Michael. And having two uh, ministers sat around that, uh, that combing table, I think, ensures that uh, the people of Aaron Michael are getting good, good, good outcomes. And Do you think the benefits then are swayed in their favour? Uh, it's not really for me to for me to form a judgment on that but it, it, it's uh, it is an additional challenge to make sure you have got time for the the day-to-day -day constituency uh, elements and uh, to to make sure you're sufficiently responsive to your constituents needs and it is it is it is a challenge but one that I you know I juggle with but uh, do I get do I get it right all the time now I'm sure I'm sure I don't I suppose if I were a cynic Tim I would say there does seem to be a habit of DOI ministers ensuring parts of their own constituency are beautifully tarmacked just before an election um, your own home ground is having some work done at the moment 
do you mean Glen Alden? Uh, it, it, it is, and what I would say on that is the only reason that that is being done uh, was because other other work uh, schemes were were not able to proceed for various for various different reasons. The road has been in a dreadful state, as anybody who lives directly in that area will tell you. Um, it's needed to be to be done, but I I don't influence the. Uh, the detail of individual schemes that that, that, that are done. There's a, there's a methodology around assessing the road conditions and the need, and uh, that passes the test absolutely. So makes you look good on the doorstep, though, will it? I, I, that's up to others to decide. Um, you know, I, I just want to get the job done and get better outcomes for the people of Erin Michael and of the Alaman, and I'll let others decide the motivation. But um, there's no personal self interest in, in 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 that at all. Okay, let's talk about Douglas Promenade uh-huh. then. And I th- do you think, firstly, it is fair to say that you were not the minister in charge when this project was agreed? And I wonder if you ever find yourself wanting to shout, "It wasn't me." Uh, well, it is absolutely true. I mean, I was appointed a, a year and a day ago uh, as, the, as, as the DI minister, uh, during which time the scheme had been going for numerous years, uh, depending on when you consider it started. Um, I, I picked it up, and my my mantra right from the start was to just get the job done. Let's get let's get the prom sorted. Get off the the pitch and let it be what it's going to be, which is a great focal point for the Isle of Man, the centre of Douglas, the capital of our island. Um, so. I picked up what I picked up in in that scheme and in, in and in others, um, and and my job is to progress them and uh, make make the best of them. How are relations with the former DOI minister between you and him? Absolutely fine, getting great with Ray. Yeah, um, but you know my style is not to go and wash dirty linen in public. Um, I'm sure if you interviewed Ray, he'd probably probably reflect on his time as the minister and say, you know, there's maybe some things he he, he would do differently again. But I'm sure that's true of all of us. And, uh, you know, Ray got the job started and I'm going to get it finished. Well, regardless of who might be to blame for whatever, you are in charge now. Yep. So back in 2016, during your election campaign, you called for astute policy making as far as the economy was concerned. But then there was this report by the Environment and Infrastructure Policy Review Committee that was released last month. And it says the DOI is hiding the true budget of the works. And in fact, the scheme has no definitive budget. So five years ago in your manifesto, you're calling for, and I quote, financial discipline. You actually boasted about your financial skills. So where do you stand on that? Well, I mean, clearly, I'm a, I'm a chartered accountant. I've spent uh, 20 years as a as a finance director in, 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 in business. And so, you know, those skills are a, are a matter of record. Um, in terms of financial discipline, I mean, of course, you've got to have financial discipline in, in, in government as you do as you do in the business world in which I, I came from. Um, in terms of the actual uh, scheme on the on, on on the prom obviously it's had its challenges it's had scope variations it's had external factors affecting it with the lockdowns and covid the the contractual framework around it is is, is absolutely uh standard industry standard in, the, in in civil engineering um but there were things found under the ground that were that were not known about there was changing requirements as uh uh, as, as as the scheme the scheme progressed, uh, ideally those things would uh, would all have been known before you start. But a scheme uh, digging up the prom, you know, Victorian infrastructure, undocumented, um, it was uh, a black box. And uh, as soon as anything was found that was different from what was expected, um, the, the, you know, it changed the game. So, so um, let's just talk. The original budget when it was voted on in July twenty seventeen was that twenty million. Mm-hmm. How much is it going to have cost? Would you say? When it's all done, well, when 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 everything's done, the 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 cost will will, will be completely transparent. At the moment, it's not it's not finished the the, the job. Some so you have was, no idea at the moment. No, it's not. That I don't have any any idea. It's just that at the moment, I'm not going to give you a a figure that that's plucked out of the air. Any any cost is it depends on you know what's what, what you're considering as within 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 the scope of the scheme. We're in a contractual arrangement with Alden Construction, which is properly governed. There's compensation events which they're entitled to uh, that quantify. There's a professional team around it. That's that's all fine. There's work that was added in. There was work that was taken out. There's work that's been delivered in different in different ways. All of that will be laid out transparently. Treasury are aware of the of, 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 of those costs. It kind of sounds though that it needs a blank check still. No, it's not a blank check. No, ab- ab- absolutely not. No, it's it's under control. Uh, the governance is around it, uh, but it doesn't. It, it doesn't lend itself to simply distilling it to plucking a figure out of the air and uh, starting all sorts of hairs run. How does that compare with, with the budget and what about these extra things? So as the minister in charge then, mm-hmm. are you 
completely happy with looking at the bits that have been done because people have, have been in touch with us talking about things like rusting bus shelters being put back, cracked concrete and wonky lampposts and it it doesn't seem to have reached quite the highest standard. Well, it's perhaps. not finished yet. It's a work in progress. Any building site looks uh, looks looks uh, less than you'd want it to be until the job's finished. So when will it be finished? Well, the, the contractual date with with Alden Construction is the end of August. Um, How confident are you about that? Well, I meet with the contractors very regularly. I, was, I last saw uh, the managing director of, of Alden on Tuesday afternoon. He was still signed up to, to that date. It's in the contract. Um, most of the risk items are, uh, are, are, are dealt with already because we're, we're out of the ground. It's, it, it's pretty much stuff that you, can, that you can see. You know, we've encouraged them to be working as many days in a week as they can, as many hours as, in a day as they can. Obviously, you have to be sensible with uh, health and safety and well-being of, uh, of, of employees, etc. But uh, uh, the, the, they're really pressing. They know the urgency and uh, my requirements for them to get on and get and get the job finished it will be great when it's finished you, you mentioned specific examples there the cracking concrete i'm already on record as saying that's a matter between the contractor and the designer that will be fixed the lamp posts I, I'm, I'm not aware of the, of the wonky element but that's a matter for douglas corporation and, and and the third element that you touched on there i can't quite recall now but uh, um that was about the bus shelters oh, the, 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 the bus shelters well yeah we're we're not there has to be some parameters around this. It would be lovely to sort of replace all the bus shelters, but we haven't we haven't got the budget to do that, so we're just we're just reinstating what we've, what we've already got. Just finally on the prom, then there is a fourth element, which is the horse tram. It's quite yeah. an interesting one. It does almost seem as if there's been a bid to try and change the narrative almost here, because the phrase extension to the sea terminal keeps being floated. It was never an extension, was it? It was a reinstatement, and it was a promise that was publicly made. So. The word extension came came back from the original Timwald Timwald motion when Chris Robertshaw uh, got an amendment made um, to to actually reinstate that uh, that length from uh, the War Memorial down to uh, uh, down to the sea term. That's where the phraseology comes from. I have been picked up on 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 that. That's just the, the terminology that's used. There's absolutely nothing intended. Uh, other than that, other than to refer to that particular element, so it's not it, politics by stealth here. Not, just... not not from me. No, I mean I said right from day one, my first interview that I did for the media after being appointed as minister, I said I am committed to bringing this back. It had already been taken out of the scope of the of the scheme at that point. Um, there was speculation going on about the the intention. Um, my commitment was to 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 bring it back and complete it in the winter after the scheme was done. That I still stand by that. What's now happened is that Treasury's requirements mean that I've got to come back to Timwall for that for, for that money to be uh, voted to, to to do that. So that's out of my hands. I have to do that, um, and and that's what I'm going to do if I'm if I'm still here. Just thinking about the DOI in general, there is perhaps a perception that roads are, are constantly being laid, dug up numerous times, big schemes starting at the same time, projects seeming to take an alarming amount of time in some areas, things costing more than originally budgeted for. I just wonder, Tim, would you say the Department of Infrastructure is living up to its Department of Incompetence nickname? I think that's a very cheap jibe that, that the public the public make. Um, and, and, you know, in, in, at one level, it's it's humorous, but at another level, it's it, it, it's 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 not. I mean, the department has uh, many challenges. Um, the, just it's just gone through the Beeman's review of reviewing the centre of the department. Every pretty much every uh, division has been has been separately reviewed under the under the save uh, scheme over the last few years. The DOI is at the sharp end. It's it's about delivering stuff. You know, people talk about the negatives, but they don't talk about how a fantastic job that the, the department did to create the oxygen uh, facility for Nobles Hospital on, on virtually no notice, about how they keep the island running uh, day by day, month by month, how, you know, whenever there's a there's a weather uh, incident, the department is there in the, in the, in the front line. Um, it, you know, the department isn't perfect. The Beeman's review will point out some areas for improvement but in my view uh, we can improve the structure and the department uh, resources have been reduced over over, over the years um, and and that probably probably needs addressing but uh, people's expectations are of world-class provision um, 
and they want the best that everywhere else has and that's that's great I, I don't have a problem with that uh, that has to be resourced if that's what people want and, and it has to be funded okay well something else that needs to be resourced or would need to be resourced is looking ahead to the next administration and you saying that one of the main priorities will be to respond to climate change issues and opportunities now if you're really genuine about that, as Infrastructure Minister in October last year, you publicly stated you wanted rail infrastructure out of the department brief instead of perhaps using them for future public transport needs. And I I just wonder, you know, tackling an issue like climate change, which we're hearing time and time again, it needs vision. And I just wonder how much vision you think you showed there. Well, I we've got a heritage railway system, which is not f- currently really part of our transport infrastructure. Um, it's It's a visitor and a leisure proposition. Um, you can have all the vision in the world about what you might do with that uh, that would require a huge amount of, of, of funding I don't think we've got the population density to uh, to, to justify a, a business case on that front however your point is right in terms of public transport having a, a, a huge part to play in, in, in the response to climate change the bus service I think is one of the jewels in the crown of not only the department but of, of the Isle of Man it has, it's had its funding cut um, over the over, over the years, very very significantly, including in this administration, prior to my prior to my appointment as, as as minister, I think there's an opportunity for us to have a better bus provision. Um, it will need it will need some additional funding to do that, um, but that is something that I I very much would like to see taken forward by by the new administration because the bus service in the Isle of Man would stand scrutiny against anywhere else in 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 in, in the British Isles. There's some really innovative things going on at the moment. It's, it's hampered by lack of funding, it's hampered by the Road Transport Licensing Committee's um, restrictions in terms of licensing new routes. You've seen that in the west of the island only, only in the last few days, a public meeting held in, in Foxdale around that. Um, there, there is some really good innovative thinking going on here and uh, that bus service needs investing in. But the, the heritage element of the railway, just very, very yeah. quickly, I mean, you talked in 2016 again about the value of yeah. our heritage and it kind of feels like you're just dismissing it a no, little not, bit No, not, not at all, no. The, the, the huge value in, in our heritage, but it's not part of our transport infrastructure. It needs to be under the governance of an organisation that, that is very much in tune with what it is, which is about the visitor proposition and about a, a heritage asset. So um, I would like to see it in, a, in an organisation, perhaps with representation from Department for Enterprise Visit, Visit Isle of Man um, and, um, and, and Max National Heritage, with those stakeholders all directing it, because it is not a commuter transport service. Only a couple of minutes left, uh, Tim Baker, but I just want to ask you, how are you relevant to younger voters in the Isle of Man in your constituency? That's a very good question. I'm a I'm a parent of uh, of a 19 year old and a 23 year old. Uh, I, I was a younger voter once uh, myself. Um, I have quite a few connections locally um, in terms of the, the things I'm involved in. So I run uh, a tail tennis club in Ramsey, which I've done for about eight or nine years. I also uh, am the main backer of the uh, the Bowen Alley in Ramsey, which is a great facility for for for, for, for young people. Um, and um, you know, I understand that the aspirations of, of 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 young people. I mean, I grew up on the island myself. Uh, went went away, got educated, came had a had a good career, came back to the island. Uh, I think I understand young people. I know I know a lot of them, um, and um, I I think it's about being reflective of all of all sections of society. I mean, we haven't got time to to go into your 2016 manifesto in much more detail, but there was a lot in there, wasn't there? And I wonder, when it comes to a manifesto, you can promise the world when you're desperate for a vote, but how much of it is tangible? How much of it's realistic? Can you look at these pages here and say, I've done everything that I promised I would do? No, you can't. You can't say everything that you promised you would do. What I did was set out a, a progress plan for the for the Isle of Man, and if you map that across to a lot of what government has delivered, there's actually quite a lot of synergy between between those two things. So I, you know, in, in, in my manifesto, um, uh, provided a mini program for government, if you like, and and a lot of that has actually been been delivered. But so. has that been delivered because you've driven it, or because it would have happened anyway? Um, I certainly don't think a lot of it would have happened anyway. You look at broadband, you look at the the steam packet acquisition, which obviously I was involved in as uh, DOI Ports Ports member, uh, very much pressed for the broadband improvements across the rural rural economy. Uh, Some some of those things would have would 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 have happened, Um, but no one person 
no one person can drive the whole of government agenda but do i think i've played a part in the last five years absolutely do i think i've given good value to my constituents absolutely do i think i could carry on and do that again in the next five years i, I do believe i could add value in fact that's what the people of Aaron michael want me to go and do well just a few more seconds then tim baker why should they place confidence in voting for you on september the 23rd well i think i've shown in the, in the five years i've Uh, in that uh, I've listened to them I've worked really hard I've got involved in the action I've taken on the tough stuff that other people didn't want to do you've not touched on planning committee um, uh, peel silt uh, some of the wider DOI aspects um, the not field inquiry that I that that I got to prominence you know these are big meaty subjects was a children's champion for 18 months Um, I've put a shift in I'll carry on doing that and uh, that's, that's my commitment, to add as much value as I possibly can.